guys, we're looking at a system here. We have a 205 over 57, and for most of the time, it was running a much lower suction until we hear our relief. If you can listen to it, you hear a relief inside the unit. I'm looking at the reversing valve temperatures. There's our discharge going to the outdoor coil, um, going to the compressor, and coming into the unit. As you see, we're picking up 13 degrees after we enter the unit, meaning the reversing valve is bleeding through. I'm gonna see if that noise is a reversing valve or some sort of failed pressure relief on the compressor. We're gonna check on both of those, but right now, you know, we're stuck with no cooling and the reversing valve is definitely uh, number one on the list. Good morning, guys. I'm gonna change the reversing valve on this pain heat pump today. Blow out the lines, make sure the orifice upstairs is gonna be a close match or close enough since we have an old Goodman air handler up there. But I'm pumping down the unit so I can go ahead and get started and then I'll put the recovery on the condenser here while I do some work on the indoor unit. That way I can go ahead and get things going instead of having to wait for the recovery. We're up in our toasty attic and we look at the piston there. You can see it down there. It has a lot of oil on it. A lot of low refrigerant velocity due to low pressure. We're going to take that thing out and blow this line out good. And make sure it's the right piston. Okay guys, I have my unit taken apart out here. I changed the piston upstairs in the attic. I'm going to sweat these pipes out of the reversing valve. The one on top I can sweat out. Some of them I'm going to cut. I'm going to go ahead and take that out and get the new valve in so we can pressure check it and see what is what. Okay guys, I cut the top off and sweat out the bottom three individually. It was pretty easy. The one I cut off going to the outdoor coil, the service valve here, I could just loosen up and kind of sweat it off. And then I had the one go into the accumulator, which by the time all the other ones were free, so I could just sweat off the valve upwards. So I have the new valve sitting in place, wrapped in rags. I'm going to braise it to the top and bottom and then I'll piece the other two together and get those as well. I have my port sweated in there. That's where I'm going to put my ester oil into. Plus I'm going to pressure check it via that port. I have the port down here you could say you could put oil into but it's so long and narrow. So much oil gets logged in those things already that I just didn't want to bother with that. I want to put it right here before the compressor. I have a little stub here sealing off the system so I can pressure check this area of the system. So I can make sure I'm squared away before I put my condenser coil back on. We have our new biflow dryer in. I just finished sweating that in. I sweat the two lines back together. Uh, I extended it out a little bit so you have a little bit of room to work on the dryer instead of having it right there next to that flare. I gotta cut this little tube off here, uncover this, and sand it down so we can set the outdoor coil back and put those two together. Well, our pain heat pump is starting to look like a heat pump again slowly but surely. I still have to put the ester oil in it. Right now we're holding pressure at around 200 PSI. We've been holding there for about 15 minutes. So I'm about to go get the pump and the oil. Put my oil in right there before the compressor. And then I can pull a vacuum and add our 407C. Fan's not doing so good. Took that fan from the inside of the house. It's like whenever the cops take your car to chase another guy. It's that same sort of thing. I just took their fan because I needed it more than them. Guys, this is my new Yellow Jacket Max Flow Deluxe Oil Pump. I have some ester oil here. All I need is a couple strokes of this in the system. Following some of the guidelines that uh, Jim has used in his videos is what I'm gonna follow suit with, which he had about 10 or 15% POE. If I do a couple strokes, it's 3.8 ounces a stroke for this particular pump. A couple strokes will give me around seven, eight ounces the total charge of the compressor is around 25 so that'll put me you know around 20 25 percent of the total oil charge in excess with poe so that's what i'm going to do i'll err on the side of a little bit less than that but i should do just about seven eight ounces the old jb platinum is pulling down about 350 micron 360 so let it go for a few more minutes we'll start weighing in our charge Check and see how much we require. This particular unit requires about 5.29 pounds filled charged because it was a dry charge unit. So we're going to do that. Probably take up to 5 pounds and do the rest by. So we just started things up. We have about 4.5 pounds in. As you see, we're running at 239 over 60. Refrigerant pressure, a little low, but a lot better than we were running the other day when we were here. So as uh, the system runs, that POE will circulate throughout the system. Uh, the mineral will sort of stay where it's at. Blew out the lines to get all of it out of the coil, out of the line set. Some will remain in the compressor, some will remain in the accumulator, I'm sure, for all of time. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and charge this thing up put my air probes in inside and catch up with you guys in a minute we are about a 285 over 78 close to target superheats a little bit low might need to adjust the fan speed I don't know in the fall I guess because it's like a thousand degrees up there no it's uh, it's performing pretty well a 15 degree split we got a little bit of humidity inside so that's you know that's within the realm of possibility there with having a 15 degree split instead of something like a 17 or 18 humidity is between 65 and 70 percent inside so there is a lot of latent load basically so we're letting it run for a little while um, let's see some drain shoot out of that p trap here in a minute some drain some water I'm delirious I would like to thank Mike Paulus Palace Enterprises for turning me on to these green tags I like the tags I always wondered where I put them but uh, inside the cabinet the little you know <clears throat> zip tie there and they're good to go and I can write the date what unit it was a little bit more information on the back we switched it to 407 blah blah blah, blah. so but the unit's running good like I said superheat a little bit low but she's cooling like a champ even though we're very humid inside there so I think we're gonna have a happy customer and I know it's gonna drain here in a second I just know it well we finally came out we came out all at once in like a river so happy we're draining very well we're removing humidity from the air as the humidity lowers our temperature split will go up and the comfort will increase so the old pain, which is not that old, but the inside's old, will live to fight another day.